Hello, welcome to this special edition of the Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Roger Colton. We have a new police chief in town now here at the beginning of the new year. Jamie McIsaac is the uh, the chief that has been newly appointed by the Board of Selectmen. And we're going to take a few minutes today to talk to Jamie about his new job and about uh, his aspirations for the future. Thanks for stopping over to the studios, uh, Th Chief. Thank you for having me here today. Every time I come here, we have a, we have a very good uh, back and forth. So We have we a, a great time. Yes. The, uh, tell me about how, just how you felt when the Board of Selectmen finally said, and the winner <laughs> is uh, Jamie McIsaac. So it was a long process, and um, I think, you know, we started with five internal candidates, which speaks very highly um, of the organization that we have, uh, that we have people who are, who are interested in the job and pursued it. And they, they, all those um, supervisors did a great job in the process. And, you know, when it was uh, finally announced, um, you know, I was, it was kind of a load off. It was a little stressful. It was a long time, and, and you know, it was the f for the first time, it was a little different for me because I've been the second for seven years, you know. For so, so for seven years I've heard, you know, are you going to be the next chief? Are you going to be the next oh. chief? And, so um, there would be an expectation th almost. There would be an expectation yeah. if I didn't get it, somebody Which would, would say, would be a burden in yeah, a way. what was wrong way. with him? So, um, it was, there was that kind of anticipation, you know, if you go for another job and, and you don't get it, you'll, you say, okay, well, you know, I still have uh, what I am. And, and it was also, even for the other candidates, what was um, interesting about this, such a public um, display, you know what I mean, of, of the interviews and everything. And, you know, everywhere you go, uh, people would come up to me and say, like, oh, hey, you did a good job the other night or whatever. And, but it just, the whole process being so public was, uh, w took a little getting used to. Of course. Now, one thing that um, I'm not sure everybody knows, but you're uh, you're a local boy. I'm a uh, local boy. Yep. I remember having this wonderful conversation with you where you were talking about how you played sports at Townfield and yeah. Townfield played against PQ and all the other all the at the time in the late '70s and early '80s, all the um, all the the parks they had a park system and they, they all played each other in the summer. <clears throat> And we would compete against one another. And um, that was, I'm the youngest of six children. My brothers and sisters all uh, spent time at the parks. Um, the third generation Belmontonian, if you will. So, um, uh -huh. yeah, Kendall, Townfield. Uh, I was a Kendall school kid where the Beach Street Center is now. And Townfield uh, certainly played a big part in, in my life growing up. Now, were there softball games over there? or There was softball. Go well, Town Field, the history of Town Field going back to the late 1800s, early uh, you know, 1911, was that was Town Field. That was where they played Thanksgiving football uh, games between Waverly and Belmont. So Town oh. Field has a long history in the town as being sort of the athletic center uh, of the town until Harris Field and, and, and the high school was built down on Concord Ave. Now, having grown up in Belmont, have you spent your entire police career in Belmont? Yes, in, uh, in 1999, um, I, I joined the Belmont Police Force, and um, so that's, that's where I've been uh, ever since. Uh, prior to that, after I graduated college in 1990, um, in those the, the eight or nine years in between there, I had worked in sales. And um, so I was 32 years old when I was hired by the Belmont Police Department. And when you were growing up, did you always, notwithstanding you just saying that you spent some time in sales, did you ever, or did you always want to be a police officer, yes, or did, did that come to you? No, when I was in uh, seventh and eighth grade, that's when I decided that I wanted to be a police officer. And, um, you know, interest tests that I took in high school, you know, were either military or, or law enforcement. And because of the civil service exams and things like that, you have to take them and depending where you fall on the list um, and if the town is hiring. And so, you know, I attended college and I would take the test. I would take the state police exam. And then um, it was really when Bill Clinton had the COPS grant and they began to hire more offices and, and provided grant money to communities. And, you know, timing is everything. Belmont was having a big turnover in, uh, in its force in, in the 1990s. And that's when almost, uh, you know, there was a, the, I was put on, I was one of six at the time that was put on, and the class ahead of me, I think, had four or five the year before, so, you know. 
Now, for the last couple of weeks, you've been the interim mm -hmm. uh, chief, but is today your first day? Today's my first full day as, as the chief, yes. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank that, you. Uh, uh, do you have specific aspirations that uh, you want to bring to the Belmont Police Department? Sure. Well, you know, the, the, what's, what's nice about the situation I'm coming into is, is Chief McLaughlin's done a great job with the department, uh, bringing respectability to the department, building a foundation. And I plan on, on trying to build on those, uh, not trying, but I plan on building on those successes um, that, that he's helped develop. Um, you know, and and create kind of add a little maybe new new wrinkles to things the way we do things around the department. And um, I think you know for the most part everybody's you know kind of excited about what what's going to occur. And are you at liberty to say what those new wrinkles are? There, there's um, there's some things w internally that we're going to do a little differently about kind of you know meeting more often um, to you know discussing uh, different approaches to the way we we've, we've been you know solving problems in the past, maybe doing a little differently. I would like to look at technology a little bit more and see how that can help us and kind of become a little more data-driven uh, organization um, than, than we have been in the past. To draw a comparison to Chief McLaughlin, uh, everybody knew the chief. I, every time you turned around, whether it was a town meeting or a football game or wherever, uh, uh, Chief McLaughlin w uh, was there. Yeah. Uh, do you have time in uh, in your schedule of being the chief, that you can continue to do that? I, I do now, yeah. I'm, I'm fortunate that my, my children are at the right age. My youngest is 19 now, so, um, you know, there's less demands. And my wife is very more than understanding about, um, the, you know, the expectations that come with this job. And uh, I plan on being, uh, you know, as visible uh, as the chief. I don't want to say more visible. I, I think I said to him uh, <laughs> when he first started, I said, are you running for mayor? I said, because, you, you know, you would see him everywhere, like you said. But, you know, that's, that's um, he, he's, as chief, you're the face of the, of the department. And, um, you know, every organization within this community is familiar with who he is. And that's how it should be. Um, you know, if anybody needed anything or there were concerns, they knew that they could that he was approachable and, and they could go to him uh. so I have a strange question for you uh, it, you you grew up in Belmont so you uh, you were an athlete uh, uh, people have known you since you were a little tyke uh, and you're no longer Jamie you are the chief uh, is that a a benefit or a burden? I, I don't think it's uh, it, it, it's a benefit, I guess, if um, for people that aren't good with names and might forget my name, they can just give it to calling me chief, right? I, that's always good. But you know, I've been called a lot of things. Uh, I've been you know I've been called coach. Uh, kids that I coach, um, you know, when they see of me in, in 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 Belmont Center, they call me coach. You know. And it's funny because names, especially the younger generation, sometimes they're not as formal. Um, Mr. McIsaac, I, I, you know, or, or you know, with my son's friends, but I coached one kid in eighth grade. He was our quarterback, and I don't know why he was the only one on the team. He'd call me Jamie, and the other coaches say, "What is he calling you, Jamie, for?" But so, I'm okay with pretty much you know anything that um, anybody wants to use. And, and as assistant chief, there were some people that called me chief then, and uh -huh. um, you know, will continue to call me chief. And so um, I'm okay with with um, with you know any of the um, any of the names they want to put on that. Uh, but re making the move to chief is a sign of respect, not just for the person, but f for the off. Yes. For the office. Yep. Uh, or am I just being an old folk? No, no, you're you're, yeah. you're correct. Like you'll say, you salute the rank, not the not the the person. Um, and and that is that is how uh, generally would like. Say, for instance, around the station, um, if, if you were a, a lieutenant or a sergeant and we're in, in an office, you might call me Jamie. If we're at town meeting or in front of people, uh, you of refer course. to me as the chief. Um, and I likewise would do the same to you. I would say Lieutenant Col you know, yes. Roger Colton instead of you know, Roger or something like uh -huh. that. Does the Belmont Police uh, Department have I any particular challenges? Uh, um, uh, it's not, I don't want to say it was a mess, but it was, um, uh, there were particular issues when uh, 
Chief McLaughlin uh, came, and we mm -hmm. don't have anything like that no, today. No, no. But do you find any challenges? Uh, there's some, certainly some challenges. There's, you know, what we don't know is always a challenge. I know that sounds funny, but, you know, one thing that concerns me is I'm not sure financially, um, you know, what's going to happen in, in the community in the near future. We all know that we're, we're, sure. we're facing some, um, some budget shortfalls, which concern me. I think uh, also, you know, in an organization like, like the Bama Police Department, one of the things I want to look at is traditionally um, police departments would hire officers and then assign officers to do work that, uh, quite frankly, could probably be done by a civilian, you know. So I think at some point, some of the back office stuff that we do as an organization, I think, could be maintained by civilians rather than officers. You know, for instance, we always kind of struggle with we, we want to take an officer and make them a software specialist or an IT specialist, you know. But they're really an officer, and that's really not why they, they became police officers. Uh -huh. So. You know, I think we have to kind of move away a little bit from that and maybe um, look at if it's a trade-off uh, between the total, you know, number of sworn officers, but then we can replace an officer with the civilian. Uh, they can, you know, do more of kind of non-traditional police stuff, um, some of that back office stuff that we, we deal with. Well, that's interesting. Uh, so, and I understand you've been assistant police chief. Mm -hmm. So. It, you, this none of this is new to you, but uh, as you move uh, into being chief, do you find yourself uh, feeling like you're still a a police officer, or are you do you find yourself being an administrator, I, I, or is that a false dichotomy? I definitely find myself being an administrator um, more. I got I was. Um, Fortunate enough, I guess you could say there was. A, I think it was two years ago. I had got in, uh, uh, got involved in, in operating under the influence arrest, where I was the first officer on scene because you, you know, you still have to respond. And it, I just happened to be in the the right place at the right time. But it was all new to me having to go to court again. I haven't been to court in a number of years, you know, for something like that. So. You know, in the back of your mind, you know, the back of the well, you always, you know, every any time you put a uniform on like this on, regardless of your rank, you're assuming a certain amount of, um, you know, there's risk that goes with that. You know, you're separating yourself out from society, you know, by, by wearing this sure. uniform. So I always remember that I'm a police officer first, but I have definitely been more uh, administrative, um, you know, oriented in, in at least yeah, the last I'm seven years. You, you would be a department head yes, uh, yeah. now, so there yeah. would be department head meetings with the town administrator mm -hmm. that you would go to to prepare for town meeting. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, congratulations, Chief, <laughs> yeah, you get a deal yeah. with budgets. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's good, and it's that's reflected in kind of what, what I read outside of work. You know, I've gone from, you know, when I was in, in policing, reading more um, you know, different things on, uh, you know, whether it was shooting or training, you know, firearms training to now I read a lot more organizational stuff, a lot more risk management things yeah. and, and, and that kind of stuff. So, so I want to back up uh, a little bit uh, because um, you, you talked about how uh, you uh, joined the Belmont Force uh, at the age of 32 mm -hmm. and have moved through the ranks uh, uh, to becoming uh, chief, how has being uh, how has being a police officer changed I in the time that uh, you've been on the force in Belmont, or is it basically the same as it's? Well, I think the 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 roots of it are, are the same. Um, there's definitely a lot more. Uh, the community has a greater expectation to know what we're doing. Um, before and us explaining to the community what we're doing. And I think that's a good thing. And, you know, I, I, it's overused, but transpa oh, I don't say it's overused, but transparency um, has, has increased a great deal. You know, there was, I, I think, um, you know, people, if you look back at the way the selectmen and, and the town administrator, and, and, you know, dealt with maybe like a police chief back in the late 1990s, early 2000s, to how we collaborate now, I think is probably a lot different. I think that the departments used to be kind of like in a silo and, and ran 
pretty much separate. I think right now, um, you know, we've, we've, and that was one of the things Chief McLaughlin was charged with, was to, to be out in the community, be out, work with the other department heads. And he did a great job at that. So I think it's changed in that, in, in terms of that, that we need to, uh, you know, there's an expectation from the public when they ask a question that they're going to get an answer. And I think we've seen that through the public records law, and there's a number of examples you can give of how that, um, how it's changed over the last 20 years. And are there new uh, businesses? And uh, one thing I'm thinking of in particular are the uh, the new marijuana, mm -hmm. uh, re whatever the appropriate term is, retail dispensaries yeah. uh, that uh, uh, are likely to come to Belmont. Uh, is there an expectation that the police will have uh, a role in that, or is it just another retail business? It's another re retail business, but there is an expectation that the police will will be involved in that. You know, without, that's early on with the, one of the companies that was looking to move in to town. Uh, you know, we met with them and and, uh -huh. and discussed their operations, and um, so you know that's that's certainly changed. Uh, you know, from when marijuana was obviously illegal to to now it's legal. And, um, you know, what concerns me most about the, the, I don't think the facilities themselves are going to have a problem, but, you know, when you get into deliveries of marijuana and things like that, that that's should be of a concern to law enforcement. Um, but there, there's been a number of changes. You know, the iPhone uh, has changed the way we do business within our, our department, you know. Um, we've had to buy, you know, especially with younger generations, and now we text, you know, do you want an overtime tomorrow <laughs> night? You know, you have to be uh -huh. in. And so... It's funny, you know, you have these policies that were longstanding, you know, call on this line, call on that line, and, and because of the iPhone, we've, we've, we've had to change that. And looking at, uh, uh, um, at the job from a different direction, uh, is it easy to, th there's a logical relationship here, uh, but is it easy to fill empty police slots uh, and the question behind the question there was, I not too long ago had a conversation with uh, Jay Marcotte, mm -hmm. uh, the DPW director, and he talked about how fewer people were choosing to make being a DPW uh, staff person a career. Uh, is there, if you need new police officers, is there a ready supply? No, and um, we're, 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 there's two, um, things affecting us in our ability to replace police officers. One is we're in civil service, which anybody who wants to be a police officer in Belmont has to reside in Belmont for a year prior uh -huh. to taking the exam. So that, that hinders us a great deal because, um, it, you know, communities like Belmont, like Wellesley, Lexington, Westwood, they've all got out of civil service. Communities like Belmont are just not uh, providing that opportunity for people like, you know, in their 20s or whatever, living back home or, you know, if they went off to college, you know, they're, they're not, their aspirations are not to become a police officer uh -huh. in, in Belmont. So that's, that's hurting us. Uh, right now we have, we're going to have three, possibly four openings, and we only have seven people on the civil service list. So that means only seven people from Belmont took the exam to be police officers. A Belmont police officer. Yeah, a Belmont police officer. And the other thing is, you know, there's, it's no secret. I mean, nationally, the, the, the police have taken, you know, quite a public relations hit over the last sure. several years. And, um, you know, so I think people look and say, I don't, I don't, I don't think that that's for, that's for me. There's a lot, you know, the economy's been, we're on a nice run here um, in terms of the economy. So I think people weigh their options. Um, also, um, with, you know, sometimes with the, with the younger generations, you know, working nights and weekends and holidays, you know, it's not such a, 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 a great uh, idea to them. You know, People would do rather that. be doing a job where they know they have their Christmas Eve. So. Yes, yeah. And I know that, you know, other communities, Cambridge, I think, that, you know, they're still in civil service. Uh, they, have the, they have the same challenges as well. And is that something that, as chief, you you can address, or is that just a well, broader social well, I'm trend? I'm so, I, as chief, I think I have a, an obligation to address it, and um, I hope that we're going to put something together before town meeting. It's affecting Chief Rizal as well as the fire department to to withdraw from um, civil service, 
And if we do, we can be like any other private entity that wants to hire somebody. We can, we can diversify our force. You know, we can go to job fairs at, at UMass Lowell or, you know, UMass uh -huh. Amherst and say, you know, would you like to become a police officer? And also, it, the, 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 if you look at our actual budgeted number of police officers, very rarely are we at that number. So if we're budgeted at 49, we're usually operating at 46 or, or 45 because the, the candidates have to take the test in April. The scores come out maybe November. And, you know, then you, you get the list, and then you have to go through a lengthy hiring process where these communities that have pulled out of civil service, they give a test on a Friday, and by Monday they know the candidates and, and who they want to interview. Uh -huh. so. I'd like to change directions mm -hmm. uh, for just a, a minute and actually with, uh, uh, ask you a personal question. Um, and I'm not sure how to phrase this, but it seems like, Upon becoming police chief, uh, you must uh, it, there. There must be a family pride and a personal pride. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've reached the pinnacle, uh, but there must be a cost to that too, because you are never not the police chief. Yes. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about the the personal cost? Well, anybody who's who's successful, and you know, I guess becoming being named the police chief is some sort of success that goes. Sure. Will tell you that they've sacrificed something. Somewhere along the line, uh, you have to sacrifice. And uh, for me, it's, you know, when I first began as a, as a police officer and people said, oh, you live in the town where you work, how was that? You know, and it was kind of like, uh, but then you, you just embrace it. Um, you know, I still have people say, do you, want your, 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 do you want your address, you know, to be public or private? I said, well, we run a middle school football program out of my house and everybody <laughs> knows where I live. Um, they come, that's where we give equipment out at. And so there is a sacrifice, though. I think in the, since I became the assistant chief, my vacations have, have kind of, you know, become fewer and far between. And uh, but you know, embrace it. This is what this is what I, I wanted. Uh, yeah. It's not a negative thing, you know. I think uh, Denzel Washington once said, you know, about being hounded by the media as an actor. He said, if you, if you pray for rain, you can't complain about the mud, right? So you know, I am, um, you know. I, you are, you're on all the time. Um, you're always basically working everywhere. You know, anytime you go someplace in town, you know, somebody is usually talking, you know, asking you a question or, or Yeah, or can whatever. I just have a moment of your yeah. time? And yeah. now I assume it's going to get worse. At least I could hide before, you know, a little bit because I wasn't <laughs> Chief McLaughlin. But um, I think now, they're, they're, you know, it'll probably be a little bit more. But I, I'm up for it, and it's not, um, you know, it's not really a, a concern to me. Uh-huh. Well, what, uh, what are your immediate plans for, let's say, the next month, and then uh, let's look out six months? Well, we have to, um, as, as the department, we have to hire the um, assistant police chief, um, which is, is my pick. And then we have to hold a, an assessment center for the captain's position, because right now, uh, and I'm learning pretty quickly, I'm doing both of those jobs <laughs> to some extent. And... Um, so we need to get that underway. We need to, I want to have, a, I want to talk to uh, our supervisors first, and then I want to have what what's, we call an all hands on deck meeting and uh, talk to them about what, what, what my goals are, what the what I, goals I see for the organization, and then to, to take feedback from, from them about what their expectations are. And hopefully we can match, um, you know, their goals and, and needs and wants with, with the department's goals and, um, you know, try to keep everybody on track with that. So, Chief, looking toward the, uh, the future, uh, one trend or one program that's being developed uh, here in the town of Belmont is uh, the restorative justice uh, project. Mm -hmm. uh, will the restorative justice uh, initiative continue uh, Absol under you? Absolutely, yeah, it will. And um, so when we partnered with C4IJ, Communities for Restorative Justice, um, you know, initially we got a couple of questions. We said, how come, you know, are you sure you're working with them? You know, because they have local volunteers. And we said, we just haven't had any cases that, that fit the, you know. Oh, they, they yeah. have to be appropriate. They have to be appropriate. Sure. Right. And um, so either unfortunately or fortunately, we do have one that uh, has come up recently. And um, so we're very uh, eager to see how this proceeds. And um, and go through, but absolutely we're going to uh, we're going to maintain it. And I also I, I like the philosophy um, of C4IJ. I, I, I'm trying to think of ways we could expand it 
within our community for non-criminal matters, you know, to help bring people together, whether it's neighbor disputes, tenant-landlord la tenant disputes, things like that, um, that are traditionally handed, handled through mediation. That maybe there's some kind, there's some place for us uh, involved in that. Now, a, a minute ago, uh, you mentioned how the police nationally have been taking a, a, a hit mm -hmm. from a public relations perspective. Uh, uh, to try to build on that, uh, how do you reflect, how does the department reflect community priorities? And what I mean by that is some people say, oh, if the police would only slow traffic down on Concord. And other people would say, oh, if the police would only enforce the, the parking. Mm -hmm. uh, I, how do you make sure that what you're doing is reflecting what the community wants done? So we listen to the community. That's one way. There's a lot of demands on us um, right now. You know, just going through the chief's um, hiring process. You know, I was asked what are you, you know, what are the core priorities, et cetera. And you know, when I when I met with the committee, I said you have to understand my response is based on the realities that exist within the police department budget. In that department, I would love to be able to say, you know, we're going to have an elder affairs officer. We're going to have an officer who focuses solely on, you know, mental health crisis issues. But you know, that's not going to happen. But that also makes working in a place like Belmont interesting and inviting because you wear so many different hats. So right now, we're hearing pretty much the traffic, you know, is is a major um, issue for us. You know, a major yeah. issue for the residents. And even in that, though, there's only so much we, we can do. There's so many motor vehicles coming through, but, you know, enforcement plays a part of it, education. Uh, we collaborate with um, the tra Transportation Advisory Committee, Safe Routes to Schools. And, uh, you know, those are things we're going to try to get more visible in. But, um, you know, you just prioritize what 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 you feel is, is a, a most need. And um, what happens a lot in, in a lot of police departments is we focus on one thing and inevitably something else, you know, comes in between us and yeah. we have to um, shift gears and, and, and sure. direction. So we always want to make sure that we get back on, on track with those four priorities, you know, which I consider the traffic, elderly, children, and people in crisis and domestic violence um, is something that's a constant throughout what we deal with here in Belmont. You know, like we might have, we have house breaks and they tend yeah. to come and go, but those, those issues, uh, you know, those core priorities are things that are always exist in, always exist in Belmont. And speaking of things that always exist, uh, it seems like Belmont has been in a constant building mode. Uh, how does the new police station uh, affect your life, if the, at all? So we, we, first of all, we, the building committee has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, we meet every Wednesday with the, the construction crew and the architect and, and discuss uh, what's going on on the site. Uh, we moved down to 40 Woodland Street, which is actually in the, in the water department yard. And the water department and the highway department have been outstanding uh, neighbors and, and helpers to get us there. Um, right now, we're, we're, we're in modulus, and everybody likes it because the parking's great down there. Um, <laughs> but when we move back into the building, it's going to be exciting because they think it's really going to be um, a special place. And, um, you Do know, you have um, an expectation of a date? Right now, they're saying maybe October, um, early November. So we we we're, we've got our fingers crossed because they've they've basically have gone through all the major steps where if they were going to have something significant that would slow the project down, it would have happened by now. Uh -huh. So we're excited about it. That's great. Well, thanks again, uh, uh, Chief, for stopping over. We have been speaking with Belmont's new police uh, department chief, Jamie McIsaac. This has, been, this has been a special edition of the Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I will see you again next time.